Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan here to talk about January 26th, four game L uh, LOL, LCK, LPL slate. Um, there are two games in China and two games in Korea that are happening tonight. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. First, I'm going to go through each roster and kind of um, give you what I think is an advantage um, for each team and, you know, for each lane. Um, and then um, we'll dive deeper into the data and the metrics for each team. And then, you know, finally, I'll kind of go through some intangibles and the play styles and any patterns or trends um, that each team has played with so far, just from a from my eye test that I've seen. And then I'll finally make a, you know, kind of like a prediction as to, you know, who I think will win and um, what, what the kill upside may look like for each team. So first, uh, let's go through China first. Weibo Gaming versus Victory 5. Um, it's a very close matchup as the odds, Vegas odds indicate. Um, Let's look at this. So this, these were the odds as of 4.13 p.m. Eastern time. So I want to see what it looks like now. So, yeah, I mean, it's still a toss-up. Uh, very close, uh, close odds for Weibo Gaming and Victory 5. Um, the storyline for this matchup is the shy versus rookie now on different teams. You know, they both played on that, uh, you know, uh, world champion championship team for Invictus gaming IG, um, that both played on. And now the shy plays for Weibo gaming and rookie plays for victory five. So, um, you know, that, that's just, but you know they but you know they were good teammates but you know now they play on different teams and they also play on different in different roles and different uh you know lanes and the shy plays top and rookie plays mid so i'm not you know hugely invested in that uh narrative but let's look at um each lane though um the shy rich uh rich has actually has been playing okay um, for Victory 5, I do think he has played a huge role uh, in their success, um, you know, holding down the top lane. Um, but in terms of like DFS, um, let's look at how he has fared so far, um, because um, at least from the eye test, I haven't seen much uh, like huge upside for um, Rich. So let's look at how he fares within the team so you see rich yeah i mean this is kind of what i was envisioning uh the data looks like so his kill participation rate is really low 45.9 percent i mean under 50 percent is really really bad but that's not atypical not atypical for top laners uh, in this meta because of the lack of um you know teleport before the 14th minute uh the the the, the change that they made in the game current meta um the kill share percentage though let's see at 16.5 percent so still not too high so i'm not you know huge on rich for dfs purposes but also just from the eye test that i'm not um that impressed with him it's not like he is the reason why he's the you know he, it's not like he's carrying the team to victory it's more like he's doing a decent job holding down the top lane while while other uh, players his teammates are playing much better lately have been much, playing much better lately so um so that's kind of where i'm at so i do think the shy will still uh beat rich so advantage him uh Weibo gaming here and then s of fm carsa i think that's a wash um they both have been playing pretty well in my opinion um carsa actually has impressed me more uh, compared to SOFM. Um, and then Angel and Rookie. I think Rookie has been playing much better lately. So I give edge to Rookie. Um, Huan Feng and Bodic. Um, I think this is a watch, wash. Most people would say Huan Feng uh, because of the name value and the consistency he has shown. But Bodic has been in really good form lately. And PP got as well. So I think the bottom lane is a wash. 
So, yeah, I mean, like I said, so it's a, it's a very close matchup. Um, the top lane, um, it's probably the only edge that Weibo Gaming has. And then Karsa and S2FM, it's close. But I'm impressed with Karsa. And Rookie has advantage over Angel. So maybe Victory 5, I'm leaning toward it, um, just based on talent and the form that they've been in. So Victory 5 would be my choice right now. So let's look at the odds. I mean, let's look at well, the look at the odds. The odds were kind of even, more of a toss up based on the odds. But let's look at the metrics. Weibo Gaming and Victory Five. You know, Victory Five. I mean, while I'm doing this, getting to this uh, screen, you know, as you guys may know, if you guys played it last, played League of Legends DFS last year, I mean, Victory Five was one of the worst teams. Um, Record-wise, also for DFS purposes, but now that they have have a they have a whole new team. I mean, they spend a lot of money in the off season to bring in all these players. I mean, Rich used to play in the LTK, Carsa played in you know for top esports, Rookie played in for Invictus Gaming, so like so on and on. So uh, you know, so far you know the money that they spent is paying off. So let's look at how that translated into the metrics. So as you guys know, if you watch my videos, I put a lot of emphasis in the jungle control percentage. Um, so as you can see, Weibo Gaming, S of FM has been more dominant than Carsa has been, 54% uh, to 50.3%. Um, so advantage goes to Weibo Gaming and the lane percentage as well, Baron Nasher, uh, Dragon, and First Blood goes toward Victory 5. Gold spend percentage, 4.2% and 3.9%. So yeah, it's really close. But notably, Weibo Gaming has been playing much slower compared to Victory 5. So depending on who you think will win, I think kind of will determine um, the kill upside. I mean, if you think like me so far, um, Victory 5 is going to win. Um, I think the kill upside is there more for them. But if you think Weibo Gaming is there, maybe they'll dictate the pace and play slower um, and, you know, produces much lower kill count. Um, but like if you average this, I mean, it's going to be close to 0 0.75, 0.76. So that's not that great for DFS purposes. We have consistently seen like 0.8 or above 0.9 even sometimes so um it's gonna be a slower on the, on the slower side i just want to look at this uh this web up website is another website that i secondary website that i look at uh gold gg um it shows like the goal difference at 15 minutes and such which uh the oracle elixir for some reason does not have right now so i want to see Where is it? Oh, it doesn't have it either. Hmm. I thought it did. Maybe not. Let's look at. Oh, okay. So they do have gold differential per minute, which the Oracle Elixir does not have for right now. So let's look at that. Um, they were Victory Five and Weibo Gaming. We're looking for. So Victory Five is in like top five. Weibo Gaming is below that, but they're very close. It's not like Victory 5, 127, gold differential per minute, and then Weibo Gaming at 172. So they're ahead of Victory 5, but they're still pretty close by 50. Um, And this, this website also has kills per game, deaths per game. As you can see, Victory 5 has been pretty high on kills. Well, the highest, <laughs> that's good to see um, for DFS purposes. And then Weibo Gaming is probably all the way down here. Yeah, so 11.0 deaths uh, per game. Weibo Gaming has given up. 10.7 deaths, and then Victory 5 is 11.9. So it's going to be close um, on the lower side, I think. And then let's look at one other metric that I saw would be helpful here. I want to see 
damage to champions per minute. I think that's an interesting metric too. Indicative metric. Um, Victory five is up here. Wable Gaming. Yeah, I mean, they're neck to neck. So yeah, I mean, as the odds indicate, I think it's going to be a close matchup. Um, I Quickly, I want to see who each, each team has played. And that also can sway my decision uh sometimes so let's look at that um so far they played we this is victory five and rare adam good decent teams one 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 wow pretty impressive all best of threes and then Weibo gaming has played again we as well BLG, who has been playing pretty well. Thunder Talk's bad, obviously. And anyone's legend turned out that they're bad too, because they didn't they just lose to Thunder Talk this morning? Um I think they did. Yeah, that's close. <laughs> that's really close. I do think this Weibo Gaming's jungle control percentage metric at 54% is padded by the fact that they played against two of the worst teams, Thunder Talk and Rogue, uh, Rogue what well, used to be Rogue Warriors, now anyone's legend. So that leaves them with two good games. BLG, good teams, good opponents to uh, BLG and WE, whereas Victory 5 is like battle tested. You know, they play against WE, Rare Adam, and Top Esports. Yeah, I think Victory 5, I think this should go down a little more, about even. Very close one. Yeah, I think Rookie has been in such good form and Botek and PP God has, have been pretty impressive to me. And it's not like the top laners can really carry the game in this meta. So Sorry guys, I know this is a very close matchup, so that's why I'm thinking quite a bit. My brain is just churning out probably useless information <laughs> that I probably don't even need to think about, but I'm just looking at, I'm just thinking about all the footages that I've watched <clears throat> out of these two, two teams. And I'm like kind of mixing that along, you know, with these data that I just looked at. Um, I think I'm gonna go victory five. Let's uh, let's uh, make a note on that here. I got. Can I move this over here? Match winners v five. Two to one, probably. They always go to best of three. Um. Okay. I think I spent too much time on that one, but you guys can see this is a close matchup. So if you are playing GPP multi entries, I would definitely have both teams. Uh, I do think um, this has a potential to to blow up, um, even though the metric uh, does not indicate that. Um, I do think LNG, the next matchup, Chinese matchup, LNG versus FPX, uh, will probably have a higher kill upside just based on the data, which we'll look at. Um, but you know. Uh, just given the roster, I think this can also 
turn into a bloody matchup. So let's look at the second matchup in the LPL, LNG versus FPX. Uh, at when I posted the starters on Twitter, um, LNG was a favorite at minus 185. And let's look at it right now, it's the same. So, um, and as you guys may have heard, uh, Clid is starting uh, for FPX at Jungle. Um, Clid used to be a jungler for Gen G in the LCK in Korea. But now that uh, he switched teams, he signed with FPX. But now this is the first, first ever, first ever game. He didn't uh, play with the team or anything like that in the preseason either. So this is going to be like a first ever competitive game that he played with FPX in the regular season, um, several weeks in. So it's going to be a tough challenge for Clid, especially going up against this tough opponent in LNG. Um, I do think um, Beichuan for FPX, who's the other jungler uh, for FPX, has been playing really well. So I don't know why they're switching this up. I know Clid was a huge signing and acquisition for FPX for the team, but I just think this is not the right matchup for him to start as a first matchup. Um, and I do think it's going to be tough for him to communicate as a Korean jungler who does not speak Mandarin. Uh, you know, I think Gori is Korean too, but Xiao Lao Hu and LWX and Hang are all Chinese. So I do think there's going to be a language barrier. And as a jungler, it's going to be very interesting to watch how he fares uh, with those language barriers in place. So given all of those obstacles and barriers, I do think um, LNG gets a huge advantage in those intangibles, but Clint also, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I never really liked his play style, even when he played for Gen G. I'm a huge LC, LCK fanatic. Um, so I watched a lot of LCK games, including Gen G games before, like in previous seasons. And Clint, and, you know, as you guys know, uh, BDD used to play for Gen G, not, not anymore. I mean, but um, when they used to play, they were good. They were good, you know, jungle mid duo energy there but um i don't think clid is gonna fare well to be honest with you in the lpl um that's my prediction and that's the that's the kind of a uh, uh outlook that i uh and prediction that i made as part of my first ever uh 2022 lpl power ranking video i mentioned that there um but you know this is the finally has the time has come here for clid to start and I just think there's there are too many barriers, and I feel like his play style does not fit well with the LPL play style, where there's going to be a constant fight and pull and push, and you know I just feel like that's not his forte. So I just think he's going to struggle. So yeah, let's talk about each matchup, uh, lane matchup, um, Ale versus Shaolia Hu. Um, I do think it's close, but Ale has an advantage there. Ale has struggled a bit earlier in the season, but now he's got a game form. At least the last series, he, he looked really good. And Tarzan and Clid, and you know how I feel about Clid. I just gave you a two-minute, three-minute speech about it. Um, so Tarzan gets an advantage. Doin B against Gori. Doin B uh, gets an advantage, in my opinion. And it's not like Gori can carry, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it has more been LWX that has gotten a lot of carry, uh, uh, kill share percentage and all that higher than Gory. So it's more on LWX's shoulders, in my opinion, to carry this uh, team to victory, in my opinion. So I do think the bottom lane is more of a wash. I think LWX and Hang have been playing pretty well for that team, um, whereas Light and Lumao have been gaining traction, positive uh, traction lately but I just feel like it's more of a wash and maybe if more maybe a little bit of advantage to the FPX's bottom duo but overall I favored the top half of the map for LNG in favor of LNG um, and just given all those intangibles that I mentioned as well um, I, just, I do think LNG should win here in my opinion pretty handedly but I always I, I you know even though that's the case I want to look at what the um metrics indicate um so it's lng versus fpx but you know these metrics are reflective of when beichuan has started the game so far 
So that tells me that FPX has been play, playing pretty well with, you know, Beichuan at jungle at 57.7% uh, almost. So that's really, really good. But then LNG is really good too, has 55% as well. And, but um, lane percentage, it's about even. Baron, Dragon in favor of LNG, LNG, LNG all the way and other metrics and combined kills per minute, which measures the kill upside. Like I said, it's higher than the first LPL matchup that we just talked about. Um, it's average on average, it's gonna be at 0.77. Um, so it's going to be a faster matchup compared to the first LPO matchup between Weibo Gaming and Victory 5, because that was at, so this is at 0.77. This is going to be at 0.77. It's gonna be close. Okay. So point fifteen point seven. So actually, it's going to be pretty close. And um, it's actually interesting now that I think about it. Um, Clid starting at jungle may reduce the kill upside, not only for FPX, but also for LNG. Just, the, the, just, by, surely, <laughs> um, just by the sheer fact that um, Clid is not as aggressive as Beichuan has been for FPX. So uh, that's actually a very interesting thought, I think. Um, I'm gonna just make a note. Clid starting may reduce the kill upside this game. Okay. So yeah, those are two LPL predictions that I'm making. Um, let's look at one last metric for uh, FPX and LNG. LNG is ahead. LNG is ahead. And now Clit is starting in place of H1. So yeah, I think I'm on the LNG hype train today. LNG. Next to next, but yeah, I mean, there are more metrics that are, that are in favor of LNG. So I like LNG a lot. I like LNG a lot, but on its kill upside, more to come. All right, so that's LPL. Let's look at the LCK matchup today Gen G versus Kwangdong Freaks. Gen G is a huge favorite at minus 800. Um, Gen G has been lights out in the LCK with that new roster, the super duper roster here. Um, those players now play playing together has rejuvenated uh, their own careers individually. Uh, it seems like um, so. I think that's a really good um, thing for each of those players, um, which that were happening with the Lakers, but that's not happening. Uh, let's see. I want to look at the data uh, metrics. Well, I can I can first go through the roster comparison as well. So Doran versus Keen. Doran is a, in an uh yeah I think has an edge here. Keen, I know he's been historically one of the top laners in the LCK, but this season for some reason he has not he has not been playing well. So I like Doran here. I like Peanut over Elam for sure, like exponentially. 
which is going to dictate my decision. Uh, Chovy versus Fate. Chovy, Ruler versus Teddy. Uh, Teddy's pretty good. Um, so I think this can be a wash. Lahans versus Hoyt. I think the bottom lane is going to be a wash, but everything else, uh, top half, half of the map, kind of like what I said about LNG. Uh, similar apply, uh, things apply to Gen.G. Um, so let's look at the comparison of the teams. So Gen.G versus... Quando freaks. So yeah, jungle control percentage, almost a 10% advantage for Gen G. Uh, lane percentage in favor of Gen G. Uh, all the metrics except for Herald percentage. I'm not hugely too worried about that. Um, third place destroyed in favor of Guangdong Freaks. Uh, first to three towers, that's that's interesting that Guangdong freaks, but then the herald rate is up. Um, so which kind of naturally translates then to that. Uh, gold difference by 800, over 800 gold at 15 minutes. Mid game rating in favor of Gen G, early game rating in favor of Gen G, although Guangdong freaks is not that bad, 44. Um, and then let me see, kill upside. So I do think Gen G should win. Uh, maybe two to one. Let me see if I think anybody can carry this team. Keen has not been playing well, so I don't think he can. Elam's ter been terrible. Fate, maybe. Um, Fate is actually, he, is, he was decent for Sandbox last season, and he just on a, stuck on a bad team, I think. They have not had good synergy so far in this season teddy could carry but then i think peanut is smart enough to shut that down so i just i just think gen g20 um let me look at the kill upside here which is at two two seven one point six eight so that's pretty slow unfortunately i think gen g is Definitely playable for uh, cash games. Um, I do think they should win um, handedly. But obviously with these like super teams though, there is a there are gonna be some spots where they can slip up, um, get cocky and arrogant and kind of slip up against like a very bad opponent. But um, I just think Gen.G has been on a, such a roll that they're just gonna, they're just gonna squeak by. Uh, if not, if not squeak by, I mean, they can. They, they're just gonna roll, roll over. Uh, Guangdong freaks um, in every single matchup, I think, lane matchup. So I think Genji should win. If not two to one, I mean, they can slip up one game in the series, but I just do not see anybody on Guangdong freaks to carry that game like that. So. All right, another toss-up matchup, um, kind of like a toilet bowl. I just want to see maybe LCK standings. So there are one, two, three, four, five, bottom five teams tied at one and three are DRX and Freddie Brion. Yep. <laughs> see, so they're, they're both tied for the last place. Um, even though five teams are tied for the last place. So they're just two of those five teams. Um, let's look at each roster real quick. I'm not too interested in playing any of these guys unless I'm playing one of them in the team slot. So I think I'll have a match prediction as to who's going to win. So maybe that way we can kind of play that match winner in the team slot. King in versus Morgan. These guys are pretty bad. Um, Probably Morgan. Um, I don't know. This they're both bad. Let's come back to that one. Piosic versus OMT. OMT has actually has been playing well. I know Piosic had a pretty good game last game, um, and DRX won their first game. But um, I want to see who they played again. Let's look at that. So DRX played against Guangdong Freaks and they won two to zero, which kind of tells me that Guangdong Freaks is also pretty bad, that they're probably not going to have a chance against Genji. 
in that first Korean matchup. Um, so DRX has played against Sandbox, Genji, T1. Okay, Genji and T1, easy losses because they're a really good team. Sandbox, first game of the matchup. Okay, oh, I mean, first game of the split. I, I get it. So maybe they're coming back. Um, they're, they're coming into form. Um, whereas Fred and Brian, they played against what's it? A T1 first matchup. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, they, but they, they beat them in the first game of that series. That's impressive. And they beat Hanho Life, which uh, is probably the worst team in the um, LCK. Genji and Damwon, both good teams. Damwon's been okay. Um, so maybe that's not a good sign that Fred Brian lost zero to two. Um, so that tells me that I just need to look at the data, uh, metrics. But in terms of any other clear advantage, let's look at, see like the name name value tells me Deft and Barrel should win that matchup, right? But Henna and Delight have been pretty good actually. So I do think this, like every single lane matchup, um, I think is more of a wash. So let's look at the actual team data. Um, Fred and Brion actually has a clear advantage in jungle control percentage at 3.6% uh, plus. Um, and then everything else close to a Herald, except for Herald and first through three towers, which is close still. Uh, goal difference. Early game, it's a close matchup. Um, So I think it comes down to um, whether I am impressed with uh, DRX's last win in that series against Guangdong Freaks, whether that is indicative of DRX coming into form and possibly hitting their stride um, to be better as a team. I don't think so, um, because let me look at what that matchup looked like. LCK Spring. Fred Abreon. No, that's not a DRX. DRX. Match list. Okay. So they won eight to six. And 18, uh, 16 to 8. Does it tell me anything right here? Yeah, so they won 8 to 6. And they won by 5K gold at the end. So let's look at the gold graph. In favor of... DRX at the end. So it looks like Guangdong Freaks actually dominated everything except for Baron. This is very interesting. How did they win? Hmm. And who? Lady Carey. Petty played well. Faith played well. But they still lost. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's look at the second matchup. What happened there? They won 16 to 8. They won by, oh wow, 16 to 8, but they only won by eight, uh, one, uh, 2.2K gold advantage at the end. So that's actually not too bad in terms of Guangdong Freak's standpoint. Wow, we get the damage distribution though. Guangdong Freak's jungle played pretty well. Well, well Italy. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not huge impressed. I'm not that impressed. So I, I do think Breon can win, and I'm going to pick Breon 2-1 to one and uh, Bloody 
this here is low point six. Mm, point six. Because I think Breon's going to win. So yeah, it's the lowest combined kills per minute game uh, of all four games. So I wouldn't really touch. Um, I mean, in an optimal setting, I wouldn't stack players from either team, either DRX or Breon. But if you are picking the team slot and playing like a one-off, or if you're needing somebody, you know, some team as, for salary relief purposes. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Breon. And even for the team slot, I mean, that's more about securing objectives and turrets and everything. And that kind of um, is associated with the jungle control percentage and what the jungler does, you know, because the jungler is the one who, um, you know, puts pressure on the map and secures objectives and sets up ob objectives. So that, you know, often turns into um, them securing more objectives, dragons, turrets, or whatever the case may be, that will give you more DFS points. So I'm definitely gonna go Brett and Breon here. Um, but like I said, stacking players from each team, I think is a, a, bad, a bad idea from the optimal setting. So anyway, so that's all I got for you guys. Um, these are my match winners and predictions. Um, and combined kills per minute, what I think will happen. Um, both LPL matchups will be higher in terms of combined kills per minute in general, as always. Um, but um, I, I am on the hype train for LNG because Clit is starting um, and for other reasons. Um, and then Victory 5, um, I do think will win. Um, it's going to be a very close matchup. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you guys have any questions, let me know on Twitter or on Discord. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button here and subscribe to our channel. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and good luck, everybody. And yeah, if you win a lot of money, feel free to uh, post it on Twitter. And yeah, uh, I will definitely retweet, retweet your post as well. Thank you.